Ponte en un lugar de una familia en el tiempo de Cristo, en Jerusalén. Una familia y en una mañana el papá amanece con una herida en su brazo. Y lo, la muestra a su esposa, ¿qué es esto? Es una herida. Y luego eh, eh, al otro día otra llaga en su espalda y otra herida y otra infección. Y luego la infección se pone blanca. Put yourself in the place of a family in the time of Jesus in Jerusalem. A dad wakes up one morning and he has an infection on his arm, a weird sore on his arm. And he shows his wife, look at this. And the next day he has another wound on his other arm and then a sore on his back and then it turns white. Y otra llaga, y otra llaga, y otra infección, y se pone más blanca. Y su esposa le dice, pues gordo, pues hay que ir al sacerdote a investigar esto. El sacerdote también era como un tipo doctor. And then finally he gets more sores and more sores, and it gets worse. And his wife finally says, well, honey, you better go to the, the priest. In those days the priest functioned as kind of a doctor as well. Y fue con el sacerdote, y el sacerdote lo examinaba. Y dijo, pues yo tengo una mala, mala noticia. Usted tiene la lepra. Y ahora de repente usted tiene que salir del pueblo y vivir en un campamento de leprosos y usted ya no puede volver con la familia. So he finally goes to see the priest. The priest looks over his wounds and his infections and he says, I've got some terrible news for you. You have leprosy. Right now you have to go to a camp outside the city of lepers. You can no longer go back to your family because this is contagious. Es una enfermedad contagiosa. Ya no, usted ya no puede regresar con su familia. It's a contagious disease. You can't go back to your family. Él dice, ¿qué? ¿Estás seguro? Sí, sí. Are you sure? Yep. You have leprosy. En Deuteronomio 13.45 dice en la ley de Moisés que alguien que tiene una infección de piel tenía que vivir en un campamento aparte de la ciudad. Tenía que poner y usar ropa rota, no podía peinarse o, o este, arreglar su cabello, tenía que poner tapabocas y cada vez que alguien se acercaba tenía que gritar impuro, impuro, impuro. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 13.45 that if you had an infection in the, with the people of Israel when they got a skin infection like leprosy, You had to live apart from your family, apart from the people. You had to wear torn clothing. You could not do your hair or comb your hair. You had to wear a mask below the nose. And anytime anybody came near you, you had to scream, unclean, unclean, unclean. Otros dicen que también usaban campanas para avisar a la gente que, que, que tenía la lepra. Others believe that they used bells to ring bells to show people that they were unclean and they had leprosy. Era un... Horror. Una pesadilla. It was horrific. It was a nightmare. Nunca poder volver con su familia. Vivir aparte en otro campamento. Tener que gritar impuro, impuro. It was a nightmare. You had to live away from your family. Never again live with your family. You had to scream unclean anytime anybody came near you. What an awful, terrible existence. Terrible existence. Tener la lepra era como sentencia de la muerte y una vida solitaria y horrífica. It was almost a sentence of death to get leprosy and it was sure a punishment for you and your family. You had to be alone apart from your family and friends and you were forever unclean. La Biblia dice en Lucas el capítulo 17 que un día Cristo se encontró con unos que tenían la lepra. The Bible says in Luke 17 that Jesus was approached by some of these miserable people. Lucas 17, 11. Un día siguiendo su viaje a Jerusalén, Jesús pasaba por Samaria y Galilea. Cuando estaba por entrar en un pueblo, salieron a su encuentro diez hombres que tenían enferma, uh, que, que tenían enferma la piel, o sea, eran leprosos. Como se habían quedado a cierta distancia, gritaron, Jesús, Maestro, ten compasión de nosotros. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee, and as he was going into a village, 
Ten men who had leprosy met him, and they stood at a distance, and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Al verlos, les dijo, vayan a presentarse a los sacerdotes. O sea, ¿se acuerdan que los sacerdotes funcionaban como doctores? Resultó que mientras iban de camino, quedaron limpios. Wow. So Jesus responded to them and he said, go, show yourselves to the priest. In those days, the priest functioned as doctors. And as they went, they were cleansed. O sea, esto era no solamente un milagro, era una transformación, un cambio de vida, de un minuto a otro, sus vidas cambiadas por completo. This wasn't just a healing. This was a complete transformation of somebody's life. Like one minute you were abandoned and lost and impure, and the next minute you could go back to your family. Un minuto estabas perdido, lejos de la civilización, de la familia, impuro, y el otro minuto limpio y con la familia. Una transformación. Uno de ellos, al verse ya sano, regresó alabando a Dios a grandes voces. Cayó rostro en tierra a los pies de Jesús y le dio las gracias. No obstante que era samaritano. Los samaritanos era un, una raza menospreciada. One of these men, there were ten men, one of them, only one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Samaritans were a reviled, kind of discriminated against race. They weren't respected. Uno, solo uno, just one of these guys. ¿Acaso no quedaron limpios los diez? Preguntó Jesús. ¿Dónde están los otros nueve? ¿No hubo ninguno que regresara a dar gloria a Dios excepto este extraño, extranjero? Levántate y vete, dijo al hombre. Tu fe te ha sanado. And then you can hear the disappointment in Jesus' face when he looked at this man and he said, were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner, this Samaritan? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Para entender cómo eran mal agradecidos los nueve, tenemos que entender el peso de la lepra. O sea, to understand just how ungrateful those nine were, you have to understand how awful leprosy was. It was a life-changing, horrific thing. Terrible thing. Y en un instante sus vidas cambiaron. Y fueron completamente sanos. And in one instant their lives were changed. They were completely clean. They were completely whole again. Y no regresaron a dar gracias a Jesús. And nine of them did not go back and thank Jesus. Es, para mí es increíble esto. It's hard for me to believe this. It's, it's almost unbelievable. That your life would change so radically that you would have a healing free of charge. He didn't ask for a love offering. He didn't ask them for 20 bucks. He didn't ask them for 100 bucks. It was free. And they were completely healed. And not even a thank you card. Cristo no les cobró nada, ni un cien, ni diez dólar, ni quince, ni veinte, nada, ni un centavo. Era completamente gratis su sanidad. No les pidió nada, y ni un, una tarjeta de agradecimiento, ni nada. Ni una canasta de flores, de frutas, chocolates. No basket of fruit, no basket, no flowers. Nothing. Pero saben que? A veces así somos nosotros. Así somos nosotros. 
Nosotros hemos recibido tantas cosas. Hemos sido transformados, salvos, sanados. Somos tan prósperos. Hemos recibido tantas cosas de la mano de Dios. Y no regresamos a darle gracias. But that's us. That's us too. We've been healed. We've been saved. We've been transformed. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit. We're prosperous. We're wealthy. We can do and eat almost anything we want. And when do we go back to give thanks to Jesus? Nosotros aquí, hermanos, en los Estados Unidos, estamos viviendo como reyes desde hace 200 años. Como reyes. Tenemos un clima controlado en la casa. Podemos comer cualquier cosa que queremos comer. Tenemos carros que nos llevan a, a donde, que, donde quiera. We're so wealthy here in the United States. We live better than kings lived 200 years ago. We have climate controlled homes. Mattress, beautiful mattress beds with blankets. Couches. I have a 60 inch television set. I can get in a car and go anywhere I want. I can literally go out today and eat anything I want. Anything I want, I can go eat. I live better than a king lived 200 years ago. Hasta veces discutimos a dónde vamos a comer. No, vamos a la china. Ah, no me gusta la comida china. Pues vamos con los tacos. Otra vez, tacos. Ok, pues vamos al barbecue. Oh, costillas. Ok, pues lubies. Oh, como dice mi esposa, white food. No. <laughs> Boom. Somos, <laughs> somos tan bendecidos. We're so blessed. We, we, we even whine about where we're going to go eat out and have someone come out of a kitchen and put food in front of us. And then we say, hey, more Dr. Pepper. And they come with more drinks. And we sit there and we just eat. Tan bendecidos nosotros. Y cuántas veces hemos regresado a darle gracias a Jesús. Cayer a sus pies. Gracias. Yo no merezco nada. Pero tu mano he recibido todo. How many times do we go back to Jesus, throw ourselves down at his feet and say, Jesus, thank you. I don't deserve any of this. And you have given me everything. All of it. Abraham Lincoln escribió una proclamación hace muchos años. Y en su proclamación escribió, hemos recibido tantas bendiciones de Dios, pero hemos olvidado a Dios. Y a la mano sobrenatural que nos ha dado todo. Abraham Lincoln wrote hundreds of years ago a proclamation and he said, We have received so much wealth and goodness from the hand of God, yet we have forgotten the hand that has provided all of this wealth to us as a country. Hemos olvidado a Dios. Hemos olvidado la mano que nos ha dado todo. We've forgotten the hand that's provided all of this. Mira, yo tengo una buena noticia para todos ustedes. La buena noticia es que nuestro gobierno nos ha dado un día libre, un día festivo, el jueves, para dar gracias a Dios. Este es el propósito. Para dar gracias a Dios como país, como, como estado, como familia, para dar gracias a Dios por todo lo que tenemos. I have good news for you. The United States government has given you an official day off an official holiday on Thursday just to give thanks to him for all the things he's given to you. That's it. That's what it's for. Por eso es el día para agradecer a Dios como país y como familias. Agradecer a Dios por todo lo que nos ha dado. Es un día libre, un día festivo. It's a day, a f completely free day off federal holiday and the only purpose of it is for you to give thanks to God. That's it. Ahora, yo, yo eh, no estoy diciendo que tenemos que ayunar el jueves. Okay? Yo no voy a ayunar. I'm not suggesting you fast on Thursday. It's not a day of fasting. It's a day to go into a turkey coma. Actually, that's what, what it's all about. That's what the pilgrims intended. Yeah. 
Yo, yo he celebrado el Día de Acción de Gracias con muchas familias. Yo fui a la Universidad de Minnesota cuatro años y luego viví en California otros siete. Y cada, fin, cada Acción de Gracias fui con una familia distinta, otra familia. Y casi todos aquí en los Estados Unidos celebramos Acción de Gracias igual. Nos juntamos como familia extendida, comemos guacolote, eh, comemos bastante postre, después pies, eh, y luego la mayoría vemos fútbol en la televisión. Y luego en los Estados Unidos es el día, es el, el día donde más gente va al cine en todo el año, en la noche. ¿Saben por qué? Porque ya no pueden aguantar sus familiares tanto. That's true. I've, I've, I've gone to Thanksgiving at many, many different homes in my life because I lived away from home, uh, you know, 12 or 13 years after I, I graduated high school. And so I went to many families' Thanksgivings, and everybody celebrates about the same. We all eat turkey together as a family. We all have all the sides, the mashed potatoes, the sweet potatoes. Then we have pies and pies and pies. And then most Americans watch football in the afternoon. The ladies play games. And then... <clears throat> And then in the evening, more Americans go to the movies on Thanksgiving Day than any other day of the year. The reason is because most Americans don't get together with their extended families much, and they just can't take it anymore, so they all go out to the movies. I mean, really, most American extended families don't get together hardly at all. It's, it's, it's sad, but true. So because you can't take it anymore, and you're tired of political arguments, you head out to the movies, right? Pero yo le recomiendo, no le recomiendo ayunar, yo le recomiendo a tomar unos minutos antes o después de la comida a dar gracias a Dios, a dar gracias a Dios como familia. I'm not telling you to fast, of course, but I am I'm urging you as a family on Thursday, before or after the meal, to take a few minutes to thank God for all that he's done for us. A prayer, a lo mejor leer un pasaje bíblico, leer eh, una proclamación de algún presidente agradeciendo a Dios. Read one of the proclamations of one of the presidents thanking God for what he's done. Read a psalm thanking God for what he's done. And then pray together. En nuestra familia casi siempre cada quien dice algo por, por uh, lo cual está agradecido. In our family normally we go around and everybody says something that they're thankful for. Yo me acuerdo un, una acción de gracias. Mi tía Graciela estaba presente con su segundo esposo. Su primer esposo murió. Ella entró en el internet Encontró otro, se casaron, y vivieron 10 años juntos, felices. My Aunt Grace is an is a amazing woman. She, her husband passed away. They were married many, many years. She told me, I don't want to be alone. She jumped on the Internet. She found another husband here in the valley. He was a, he was a retired pastor, also a widower. And they lived together, married for 10 more years. Went on cruises, had a great time. I remember she came by the church to introduce me to some of her dates. And I'd say, Aunt Grace, why are you in such a hurry? And she said, look at me. I'm in my 70s. I don't have a lot of time. I'm in a hurry. Pero estaban muy enamorados, ¿no? Ella y, y Vern se llamaba. Y fuimos por la, en la casa de mi hermana. Cada quien estaba dando gracias a Dios por... Y yo, en este entonces, les dije, bueno, pues yo doy gracias a Dios porque... Eh, tenemos un carro nuevo, un carro muy bonito, and I thank God for our new car that we got. Okay. Y luego le tocó a Vern, y él dijo, yo doy gracias a Dios por mi esposa hermosa, y la quiero con todo mi alma, y comenzó a llorar. Y luego dije, pues yo quiero cambiar, este, cambiar el, 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 el wow, todos los esposos, ay, So we were going around the table at my sister's house on Thanksgiving, and I said, well, I'm thankful for our new car. We got a new car. And then Uncle Vern, you know, he was next, and he said, I just thank God for my beautiful wife, Grace, who is the love of my life. And he just started crying, like literal tears pouring down his face. And I said, well, I'd like to change mine. I want to change. <laughs> It was pretty embarrassing for the rest of the husbands that were seated around the table. But he was so grateful. I mean, he, he really did love Grace. Um, he, he uh, yeah, they had a they had a wonderful relationship, but he was so grateful. But it just it's important to take time to thank God. 
Don't be like those nine guys. Lives totally changed, transformed. Going home. I'm not a leper anymore. I can see my family. Hey, dude, time out. What about the one who just healed you? No sean como estos nueve leprosos. Mi vida totalmente cambiada. Ahora puedo regresar con mi familia. Ya no estoy enfermo. Ya puedo seguir con la vida. No tengo que vivir aparte. No tengo que gritar impuro, impuro. Ah, ah. Y él, me, él, él, él que me sanó. Cristo Jesús. No tengo cinco minutos para regresar y agra agradecerle. And Jesus, the one who healed me, I, I, I haven't got five minutes to go back and thank him. Listen, we are so fortunate. We're so fortunate. We're so blessed. Somos tan bendecidos, hermanos. Tan bendecidos. Hay que regresar y agradecer a Dios. Mira, como familia, mira a Dios. Gracias. Unos minutos antes o después. Gracias, Señor. Gracias. Y luego suplicarte por su misericordia para los Dallas Cowboys, porque es un cuadro muy, muy peligroso el jueves. Pero comenzar agradeciendo a Dios. It's just, it's first things first. I'm going back. I'm, I'm going to thank God for all that I have, for all that I've got. Man, just think right now. Think right now of the things that God has done for you, the times he's come through for you, the times he's given you peace when you didn't have peace, the times he's given you hope when you had no hope, the time he healed you when you were out of luck, the times that he's provided for you when you didn't have what you needed. The times that he had mercy on your marriage. The times that he had mercy on your children, on your family. The times that he looked down on you and said, I'm still here. I'm with you. All those times he gave you hope and a future and came through when you needed him. Think about those times and come before him and say, Jesus, I just wanted to come back and say thank you. Thank you. I didn't deserve it. Piensa en los momentos en que Cristo te rescató cuando estabas perdido, cuando Cristo te transformó, cuando Cristo te sanó, cuando Cristo te ayudó en tu matrimonio, te ayudó con tus hijos, te ayudó en momentos en que no tenían dinero, cuando no tenían trabajo, te ayudó cuando no, no tenías ninguna salida y Cristo llegó y cambió todo. Piensa en estos momentos. Y hay que regresar a Cristo Jesús y decirle, gracias Cristo, gracias. Hay que ser como este samaritano que fue limpiado y sanado y regresó con Cristo, cayó de rodillas, rostro en la tierra y dijo, gracias. Let's be like that Samaritan who came back cleaned from leprosy, completely healed, and he threw himself down face in the dirt and he said, thank you Jesus, gracias Jesús. Gracias, Cristo. Thank you, Jesus. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Thank you. Gracias, Señor. Debemos de ser un pueblo agradecido. We should be a thankful people. Because you know what? When you're thankful, when you're thankful in your heart, you don't tend to whine as much. There's not much to whine about when you're grateful. Cuando tenemos un corazón agradecido, no chiamos tanto. No quejamos tanto. No hay tantas cosas negativas en la vida cuando tenemos un corazón agradecido. If you walk around with a grateful heart, you're less of a whiner. We want to say thank you, Jesus. En cada familia, en cada casa, queremos agradecer a Dios. In every family, every home, we want to thank the Lord. Vamos a estar de pie y vamos a comenzar ahora mismo a dar gracias a Dios. No vamos a esperar al jueves. Vamos a decirle gracias ahora. We're not going to wait for Thursday for Thanksgiving. We're going to tell him thank you right now. We're going to take a minute Take a few minutes and say thank you. Gracias, Señor, porque soy tan bendecido. He sido transformado, salvo, cambiado. Thank you because I'm so blessed. I've been transformed. I've been saved. I've been healed. I've been delivered. My family has so much because you're so good to me. Tú eres tan bueno, Señor. Mi familia tiene, es tan bendecida por tu gracia. Por tu gracia. Jesus, we just thank you as a family. We come before you and we thank you. We fall down at your feet, Jesus, and we just say thank you. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve your grace, your goodness, your healing. But we thank you, Lord, because you're a God of mercy. And you look down at me and you love me. And I thank you, Jesus. 
Te damos gracias Señor como familia Te damos gracias Porque aunque no merecemos tu gracia Señor nos amaste Nos salvaste Somos miembros de tu familia Somos bendecidos Señor por tu gracia Gracias Cristo Gracias Señor